Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Yushkovich, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, RSNA hands-on course, Learning ITK Snap, Learning Image Segmentation Basics with Hands-On Introduction to ITK Snap. Um, so this course is uh, being uh, presented by myself, um, Dr. Phil Cook, and uh, Dr. Joe Wildenberg. Um, so we'll start out with a little bit of slides, then you all should have gotten some handouts to do an exercise or two, then we'll come back with some more slides by Phil Cook and some more exercises. So, um, so this course is about a tool called ITK Snap, which is an open source interactive tool for labeling anatomical structures in 3D medical image volumes. So it's a tool that's written in C++. It's an open source end user GUI tool and you can download binary executables for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Um, now there are a lot of tools out there for image processing and image analysis and so the, the main vision for ITK Snap has been to make a somewhat limited feature set so that the tool has a fairly gentle learning curve. We want it to be easy to learn and use for clinicians and for researchers who are not necessarily computer scientists or computer science graduate students. <coughs> As part of that, over the years, we've tried to limit the set of features in the tool to those features that really support the core Im mission of image segmentation. And so we don't have like a bunch of plugins for different specific <laughs> applications. It's really meant to be a general purpose image segmentation tool. A little bit on the history of this tool. So it's been in development uh, for now 17 years or so. It started out as a series of graduate student projects, programming projects in the computer science department at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, it was led by Professor Guido Garrick, who's going to be teaching this course on Thursday. Um, and then uh, with some funding, we've uh, integrated with this uh, ITK toolkit from the NIH, which is a set of libraries for image segmentation and registration. And over the last five years or so, we have been, we, we've had a, a R01 grant under which we've really transformed this uh, tool, added a lot of functionality for multimodality image segmentation. So particularly for people working with MRI, being able to load a T1, a T2, a flare, and use all those modalities together for semi-automatic segmentation. And there's some statistics on the right. You can see it's fairly well cited, quite a, quite a bunch of downloads every month. So it's, so it's really probably out of the open source tools out there, the most used image segmentation tool in the field. So today's course uh, is going to introduce you to the basics of ITK SNAP. We definitely don't have time to cover everything that the tool can do, but should get you started. So at the end of the course, you should be able to uh, visualize 3D image volumes uh, loaded both from DICOM and NIFTY formats. You should be able to label anatomical structures and lesions in 3D images, both manually and using semi-automatic tools. You should be able to edit your segmentations using three-dimensional tools, um, load and save segmentation files, and most importantly, know where to look for more information as you adapt this tool to your own use. This is how the tool is organized. Uh, so right now, we're doing what's supposed to be a 15-minute introduction session uh, and overview of manual capabilities. So the first half of the course is going to focus on manual capabilities, loading images and manual segmentation. And so you'll do a 30-minute exercise on that. And then the second part of the course is going to focus on the more advanced semi-automatic capabilities. And again, you'll have some exercises. Um, so before anything else, this is where to find uh, lots of additional information about this tool, itksnap.org. Uh, this is where you can download the binaries, uh, find uh, some images to play around with, and you'll also find some video tutorials. Um, the last uh, bullet point is a plug for a command line tool that's a good companion to ITK Snap, 
for doing various image processing operations. So if you need to crop images or if you need to uh, batch some of the stuff that you learned to do today and apply it to 100 images, uh, Convert3D is a, is a useful tool for that. And uh, last thing on this slide, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look at uh, the little blue box over there uh, on the website, the first link under there it includes materials for today's course. So you should have materials on your desktops, but you should also have should be able to access these materials from our website. So uh, let's get into the main material for today. Uh, so the main idea with ITK Snap is that it's a way of going from imaging data to quantitative measures. And so uh, part of this pipeline is to go from the scanner to reconstruction of images and generating image data. And the other part, and that's where ITK Snap comes in, is to take this image information and actually produce quantitative measurements and various other uh, things. So some things to keep in mind in terms of how ITK SNAP works. So DICOM is a very complex format and it can represent images uh, in different sort of slice, slicing orientations and different modalities. But as far as ITK SNAP concern, is concerned, it really expects a Cartesian three-dimensional volume. So it thinks of an image as being a three-dimensional array of pixels. Now it can also allow for four-dimensional images. So if you have 3D plus time or if you have a diffusion tensor image, that, that is also supported. But essentially it's an organization that expects a Cartesian 3D volume as opposed to, for example, an ultrasound where you might have a cone, a polar image. That's something that's not currently supported. Um, now, ITK Snap is going to represent that image in memory and also it's going to represent a corresponding 3D label data array. Essentially, for every one of these voxels in the 3D volume, ITK SNAP assigns it an anatomical label. And so the task of segmentation is assigning labels to voxels. That's really it's all, what it's all about. Assigning labels to voxels using various tools. So here you can see an example of a 3D image with overlaid segmentation where these different anatomical labels uh, are painted with different colors. Once you complete the segmentation, then you can measure volumes and statistics of different structures. You can also export uh, three-dimensional meshes, which you can then, for example, 3D print if you wanted to have a physical object out of your segmentation. Uh, the primary display in ITK Snap is to take your three-dimensional image array and slice through it in three orthogonal slice planes. So you, you have you know, axial, coronal, and sagittal slices. And this third window that's currently blank is a 3D rendering of the segmentation. Right now there's no segmentation yet, so there's no 3D rendering. When you do have a segmentation, and again, segmentation is really I lost my 3D pointer, a process of assigning labels to voxels in the image. Once you create a segmentation, you can see the segmentation in these different orthogonal views as well as in the 3D window. And the way that these 3D arrays of labels, which are numbers, 2, 5, or 0, are colored and represented to you as a user is through a separate label description file, which maps these numbers, 0, 2, 5, to anatomical labels with associated color, transparency, and so on. And we'll go through this in specifically in a second. So now we'll move into a little bit more about using ITK Snap. Uh, look at some of the windows that you'll be interacting with quite a bit. So the, the window you're going to be using most of the time is this main ITK Snap toolbox. And it's going to be on the left of your user interface. And it's organized into four areas. At the top, you have a small toolbar where you select one of six main tools. So there's a crosshairs tool, zoom tool, polygon tool, paintbrush tool, automatic segmentation tool, and annotation tool. 
Underneath is an inspector window. And this inspector window is going to change depending on what active tool you've selected. So if you select the crosshairs tool, then you'll get a cross cursor inspector. If you select the paintbrush tool, you'll get a paintbrush inspector over here. Underneath that is a panel where you can select labels for segmentation. So you will go through this, but you'll select which anatomical label you want to segment with. And finally, at the bottom is a tool selection for the 3D window. The 3D window uh, has its own set of tools. So out of those six tools at the very top, those main tools, the two most frequently used are what we call navigation tools, the crosshairs tool and the zoom pan tool. So the crosshair tool allows you to move your three-dimensional cursor in each of the slice views, both in plane and out of plane. And zoom tool allows you to zoom in and out of images and pan around once you're zoomed in. So here's a little video that demonstrates some of these tools in action. So here, uh, the user is using the crosshairs tool, clicking around in the image. And as they click in one of the views, the other views also update. So now there's some zooming going on and some panning going on. And you can also pan. There's a little yellow sub-window on the lower left. And you can also use it to uh, pan around. Just run this one more time. So, okay, so clicking around positions the three-dimensional cursor, you're always looking at the same voxel in all three slice views. And now it's panning and zooming. Another important tool uh, that you'll use in your exercises is window and level adjustment. Um, so when you load an image, sometimes the way that uh, the intensity levels in the image map onto the intensity levels on your screen is not optimal. So you, you go to Tools Image Contrast and you get this interface for uh, contrast adjustment. You can do simple linear adjustment uh, as shown here, or you can do a curve-based adjustment. And we'll have an exercise that goes through that. So on to manual segmentation. So ITK Snap provides two basic uh, tools for manual segmentation, the polygon tool that you see on the left, and the paintbrush tool, which is shown in the middle and on the right. So the polygon tool is fairly straightforward. You click around, make a series of clicks uh, to outline your structure of interest, complete the polygon, and fill it with your current anatomical label. The paintbrush tool is useful for editing segmentation. So once you've drawn something with a polygon or generated an automatic segmentation, as we'll do in the second part of the course, sometimes it's helpful to just do some cleanup and the paintbrush tool lets you do that with a series of clicks. There's also this adaptive mode in the paintbrush uh, tool which allows you to kind of do quick uh, semi-automatic segmentation. It's sort of wherever you click, the similar pixels are also labeled. Uh, with your current label, and we'll have an optional part of an exercise focusing on that. So a little bit more on these uh, two tools. So the polygon tool, again, here's the main uh, tool panel on the left. Um, you select the polygon tool. You select what label you want to paint with. You draw the polygon, and here at the bottom, right underneath the window, there's some buttons like accept, delete, etc. Those are buttons that you'll use to process your polygon once, you're, once you've drawn it. Paintbrush tool, you select the paintbrush tool in the toolbar. It has its own inspector. In that inspector, you can select the shape of the brush. So you can have a round brush, square brush, or this adaptive brush that was shown in the video. Select the size of the brush. And there's some additional options. Among them, you can select whether the brush only affects the two-dimensional slice that you're seeing or whether the brush is a volumetric sphere or small cube so that you also 
paint in the adjacent slices. Once you do these drawings, you can also see them in 3D. Um, another useful uh, interface as you're working with your segmentations is the label editor, accessible under tools menu. And in the label editor is where you define the different anatomical labels that you use for your segmentation. So you can create a set of labels uh, that correspond to your task, um, assign them colors, and you can search for labels if you have very many labels, um, change color and opacity of labels. And there's also um, here a button that allows you to load and save large label sets. You can also hide labels in 2D and 3D windows. So for example, this 3D window shows a lot of labels rendered, and you can selectively hide them in 3D or in 2D. Finally, the last thing that you'll be doing in the exercise is to look at volumes and statistics uh, after you've completed the segmentation. So that there's this volumes and statistics window. Gives you the volume of all the voxels assigned each label in your segmentation in cubic millimeters. And also gives you the average intensity and the standard deviation of intensity under each label in the MRI or CT image that you load. So that's it for the slides for the first part of the course. Uh, and now please turn to your uh, handouts and go ahead and do exercises one and two. Um, there are many, many steps, but they should be fairly straightforward to follow. If, if you get stuck, I suggest first maybe turning to the person next to you, seeing if they already passed that step, and letting us know, raise your hand, and we'll come by and, and uh, help, help out.